guys, welcome back. So I hope everyone had a wonderful New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. Just to recap the last couple weeks, we got over our stomach bug and then got sick with congestion. Me and Max, Mike is fine. As always, I swear his immunity, I think it's the army that has forced his body to just overcome everything. Max got really sick with horrible teething symptoms. I think her two year molar started to come in and um, she was just awful. Like if, if there was a hole on her face, mucus and congestion was coming out of it and it was gross and just the poor thing. Um, and then pretty much the same thing happened to me. But yeah, after a few days of taking Claritin, both of us cleared up, dried up and started feeling better. But yeah, it was rough for another few days and then I was just busy doing all of our um, dog sitting jobs, wrapping those up. Um, as far as baby news, I failed my one hour glucose test and I had to go back and do the two hour, which meant I had to get my blood drawn three times and fast for, I ended up fasting for like 15 hours. Yeah, it was not fun, but I am happy to report. I just got the results back from that and I do not have gestational diabetes. Anyway, it is a new week, it's Monday. So I figured I would come back on here and um, start vlogging since things are really going to start picking up here soon. I start going to the OB every two weeks um, starting this Thursday. Yeah, we're just honestly getting the house ready. We're purging. We're trying to sell stuff. Um, I still don't have official orders yet, so we're still not announcing, but um, we are in move mode mindset of moving and getting rid of everything and figuring out timelines of when to ship stuff and all that fun, fun, fun stuff. As of right now, Max is sleeping. I think I might go lay down for a short little cat nap. Then I need to start making dinner. Tonight is white chicken chili. So I'll share that recipe with you because it's really good and it's really easy. And Max loves it. Start by putting your chicken breast at the bottom of the pot. I have five in here because they are half breasts but you really only need like two to three. Then you're going to open a can of white kidney beans and a can of black kidney beans, and you wanna make sure that you drain them and rinse them really well, because nobody wants to eat the junk that comes out of those cans. It's just <clears throat> when you drain, oh, look. <laughs> I mean, no judgment if you wanna eat all that, but I definitely rinse my beans, and then you're gonna add those to the pot. And then I'm adding one diced yellow onion. And then you're going to add a can of yellow corn. And you're not going to drain the corn or the Rotel tomatoes. I use the Rotel tomatoes with lime juice. And then you're adding a fourth a cup of chicken broth. Stir that all together. Make sure that the broth gets underneath the chicken on the bottom. And then you're going to add about four ounces of a ranch seasoning packet. A little bit of cumin. About one tablespoon and then one tablespoon of chili powder as well. And then you're gonna top everything with a block of cream cheese. I cut it up into six cubes. Set your timer for manual pressure for 20 minutes. And then once that goes off, you're gonna let it set for 10 and then natural release it. And there you have your white chicken chili. Top it with avocado, cilantro, whatever your heart desires and enjoy. Hey you guys, good morning. So I am on my way to my OB appointment this morning with Maxine and um, Mike couldn't get the morning off to come with us for this appointment. So it's just me and her today. I just hit 29 weeks yesterday. So we're almost at 30 weeks, which is pretty much the final stretch of pregnancy. I have about two and a half months left. So ooh, it is going fast. We're gonna have a baby soon. What? <laughs> still so weird to say so it's been kind of a slow week not too much has been going on except I do have a quick story to tell you as I drive um, I had to call the MPs the other day and file a police report because there was kind of a weird thing that happened at the house and um, Max was sleeping and it was like 2 30 a quarter to 3 in the afternoon and the doorbell I was upstairs usually I have the dogs with me in the bedroom locked away so that if the off chance somebody delivers something or like sweets by the house most people will text and call um, before they do that but yeah anyway I left the dogs downstairs this time and I hear them going nuts so I quick sprint downstairs try to get them both quiet and under control because Max was trying to sleep and um, it was taking me a few minutes to get them like settled down 
It's like, this is weird. Why are you barking? Nobody's here. And then I hear two male voices outside. This is weird because I couldn't see them when I looked out the front door. So, <laughs> yeah, you tell them. So I open the front door and it's these two guys. One speaks only German and then the other one is a younger kid who is translating. And so they're like, English or German? And I said, English. And so they're like, hey, we're here in the area. Um, we're asking all the homeowners if we can come inside and install an upgrade for the internet. And I was like, hmm, I don't know anything about internet upgrades coming. And at this point, I see that they're wearing jackets that say T-Mobile. And I'm like, hmm, also red flag, because like we don't have our internet provider through T-Mobile. So I'm like, yeah, I don't know anything about this. Um, and also, I'm not the homeowner. Like, you know, you guys will have to come back, because we're just renting this property and we don't have permission to like let you in to install things and so they're like yeah and then they heard me say tks and they were like yeah but we're in the area and we're trying to install something for everybody locally and i was like again like that doesn't make any sense to me like they weren't trying to barge in but they were trying to, they were trying to like justify why they needed to come into the house finally i just said like i don't own the house if um if there's any type of maintenance that needs to be done with the house, usually the housing office will let us know ahead of time and we'll have a notification and like a memo on the door that tells us when you're coming in advance so we know to let you in. And I was like, I haven't received anything like that, so um, I can't let you in today. And they were like, okay, no problem. And then I had said like, and honestly, like you're gonna be wasting your time going to everyone in this neighborhood because all of us rent from the military. And so they were like, oh, so it's like government housing. And I said, yes. And they were like, well, what houses are German and what houses are, cause it's a blended neighborhood. So I was like, these two over here are German. The rest is all American, like military housing. Like, oh, okay. And I was so caught up. Okay, so <laughs> before I jump to why I felt like I needed to call the police. So um yeah they left after that they were like no problem not a big deal we'll leave we'll come back if we have to i'm like okay cool and then i call the housing office because i'm like well this is kind of sketchy it's two guys that showed up never saw a t-mobile truck t like parked outside the house or on the street um had no notification of them even coming to install anything tks our internet provider never gave us a heads up that they were going to be in the area doing stuff so it was just like red flag after red flag and so i ended up calling housing and i was like hey this is the scenario that just happened do you guys know anything about this and she was like no that's sketchy she's like let me call my chief and um see what he says like her supervisor and she's like but i'll give you a call back she's like but i'm thinking that you should file a report i was like okay so she calls me back and she's like, yeah, my supervisor has no knowledge of this. We have nothing to do with the internet installations. Um, anything that housing puts out for you guys to be notified of, it's all going to be like maintenance, like chimney sweeping or oil delivery or, you know, something that's just basic maintenance. I'm like, okay, cool. Yeah, it makes sense. That's what I figured. And so she's like, my supervisor and I um, both encourage you to call the MPs and file a report. I was like, okay seems kind of excessive like I'm sure these guys were legit but it was just like the scenario in which it happened and played out because I had also texted my neighbor and was like hey have two guys shown up at your door yet and she was like no weird and I was like okay so they only hit my house and then because I was so caught off guard and I don't know if it's pregnancy brain or just like I don't know but my brain went to worst case scenario and I was like, oh my God, I just told potential terrorists that we're an entire military community and everybody's a part of the U.S. Army. <laughs> and so I was like, I, now I have to call and file a report so that it, people are aware because I may have just given away like a location to keep everybody safe, not thinking the repercussions, like God forbid. I'm sure everything is fine. I'm sure these are just like employees doing their job trying to install whatever cable they need for the internet to be better in the area. But 
yeah it was just a weird scenario i was caught off guard so anyway i followed the advice of the housing office i called the mps and they sent a squad car out and then they sent out another one and then the polisite car <laughs> and there's like four squad cars outside my house and they're like having me they asked if I wanted to make a statement and I was like I don't have a statement to make like everything's fine it, they didn't try to barge in I just thought it was a weird scenario they made a report and they drove around the area and looked for the gentleman and they couldn't find them um, and then yeah the German police were just like yeah you don't want them in your house don't let them in and I was like yes I know that I didn't let them in and they weren't trying to barge in I just I was just following the advice of the housing office and so um yeah that was my first experience ever having to call the military police it was honestly a waste of time <laughs> because i was like um okay so like what comes of this if if anything they were like yeah nothing we'll just do a patrol around the area but yeah nothing i mean nothing's gonna come of it like i'm it's everything's fine we're not gonna follow up with you and i was like okay cool i'm glad i wasted everybody's time doing this i'm sure that they were just doing their job but I think just cultural differences of like if my internet provider has our email address and our phone numbers to get in contact with us, there should have been a heads up sent out before they started coming into the area to like try to get into your house to do those things. And you just never know nowadays. Being in a foreign country, you don't know what people's intentions are. Um, so I would rather have been safe than sorry. Anyway, it's been kind of a quiet week other than that, but today we have my OB appointment, and then tonight we have a um, promotion ceremony for Mike's boss. So yeah, we're gonna go check on the baby first, and then go home and get ready for that event. Baby sitting at the moment. The back end, the baby is out there. Okay, so let's measure the baby. Yeah. Yes. Let's see. Mommy, you have a little bit, little bit, a little bit of cord here. <laughs> Sucking maybe on the little bit cord. I don't know. guys good morning we are on post running errands i am just waiting for mike and max outside of the clinic i had to go to the patient liaison and have them help me um make my pre-registration appointment for the hospital that i'm giving birth at it is not the same hospital i gave birth at with max um this one is a VBAC friendly hospital that's within a two hour radius of bavaria so this is my best shot at having a vaginal delivery by finding providers that are... Well, I dropped my phone. It's hard to reach down with the belly. Um, yeah, this is my best chance at having a vaginal birth. Finding providers that are well-versed in VBACs and supportive, not just tolerant. That 
appointment is February 20th, so it actually works out that it's on a holiday because Mike should have the day off so he can attend that appointment with me. Oh, the OB yesterday, just some third trimester OB updates. Um, baby is three pounds, four ounces, so no, three pounds, five ounces, so it has gained a pound and four ounces in the last month, which feels like a lot. It's probably why I'm so tired all the time. Baby is also head up, which is why I feel all of the baby kicks in my cervix and not my stomach. So that's been an uncomfortable uh, experience so far because Max was always head down. So all of the movement that I felt was like upper body. Um, and then what else? Yeah, everything's healthy. Heartbeat was good. I'm pretty sure that's it. We went to the promotion ceremony last night and that was a lot of fun. It was probably the most kid-friendly event that we've been to. And I think partly because, um, the soldier that got promoted has four kids himself. So his wife knew to come prepared with games and toys and they had a DJ and a dance floor and so Max tore it up. <laughs> she actually danced with a stranger in his lederhosen which like he held out his hands and was like do you want to dance and she actually went like towards him with her arms up like she was okay with him picking her up and then they danced and it was really cute. Uh, but yeah she had a blast. Once Mike and Max get back in the car we're gonna head to Ikea because I need a tea strainer infuser for my red raspberry leaf tea. My friend let me borrow one. Um, and hers is really nice because you can do like 35 ounces of tea at a time. The one that I bought, while it's cute, it is not functional when you have to drink three cups of it a day. I also start dog sitting today for the family I did last time. And they're super sweet. They have a German Shepherd and a Oshbach. I think that's how you say it. He's huge. He's very tall. He's like a polar bear. That's what we got going on so far. So, should be a pretty busy day and pretty productive. I need to go home with all this motivation and start crossing off our to-do list of chores because our house is messy again. I'm coming. Max, what is that? It's a neigh. <laughs> it's a neigh? Yeah. Wow. Neigh. Look at this cool it's setup. Neigh. This is fun. Oh. <gasps> Whoa, what is that? Roar. Oh, that is a monkey. <laughs> ooh, ooh, ah, ah. This is the first room in the whole store and we're gonna be, it's <laughs> gonna take us hours to get through Ikea with a toddler. We should have brought the stroller. Come on, let's keep going. What do you mean no? There's so many more rooms to check out. Come on. <laughs> oh. That's a cactus. Meow, meow. You're in the bed? Oh, it's <laughs> Oh, Max. You're nuts. Is that fun? You want more drink? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Cheese. Cheese.